So we're going to just show you the reconstruction of the endometrium here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to, you can either do it on the fly when you're uh, doing your initial sweep with the patient. If you have time, when you get really good at this, it's only going to take you like 30 seconds maybe to do all your manipulations here. Um, but in the meantime, you can save your volume as shown in the other uh, video clip and then come back and manipulate it after the patient's already gone. So what you're going to do is if you do it when, they're, when uh, the patient's gone, bring your study back up by restarting it according to the restart directions, which um, you should be familiar with how to restart. Then you're going to go into your review, and you can double-click on the uh, volume to bring it back up and the image, and it's going to come up to the um, rendering mode automatically here. Or you can click on your image, and then the third uh, or the second soft key here is going to say 3D40. If you press that on the keyboard, that will also reactivate that volume. So once your volume is reactivated, you're going to see the active box is green. Anytime you want to change your quadrant to a different quadrant, you're going to use the thumb wheel here, and you all know where that is on the keyboard. So, but you're going to see me changing this with the thumb wheel. Watch it moving around there, and the different quadrants are changing there. So the first thing you're going to do with uh, this. This A quadrant is A, B, C, and the render. The A quadrant is your acquisition quadrant, and here's our long uterus that we acquired with the nice midline picture. If you need to search for the midline picture, you can go through the slices here by using your uh, thumb wheel. Right now it says quadrant. If I push my thumb wheel in, you're gonna see it's gonna change to slice, and if I dial it, you can see it changing the slices here. If you acquire it, with a nice midline picture, you shouldn't have to search for the midline slice because the midline slice will be there from your initial acquisition. So we're going to change back to quadrant here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move my reference dot. And my reference dot is the same spot in all three planes. And I know I'm in my pan mode here when I have my dot with my four arrows on it. And I'm going to move this up into the fundus. Now one thing I'm going to also show you here is if for some reason you don't see your reference dot here, uh, if you pan down here to the uh, home base here, you can see me hitting the priority key and I'm going to show you when I hit the priority key what happens up on the screen. So um, if we look here, the priority key controls either the plane or the slice and then my next key would do X, Y, and Z. But when I go here to my priority key, here is where uh, my trackball would go through slices here. If I hit my priority key again, I go back to my pan function. So the priority key will go between slice and plane. Um, so here I'm in pan, and I hit it again, and I go to slice. So as I showed earlier, you can go to slice here. You can also go to slice by hitting your priority key. And now I can go through my slices to find the midline if I need to there as well. Uh, but I'm going to go back to my pan function. Again, priority key will go into, get you into the pan function and that will let you move your reference dot. So now I'm up in my fundus here and I see the nice slice of my transverse here. My coronal plane is here and here and that's what I'm, my goal is with my reconstruction is to line up my endometrium parallel with that coronal plane. And once I look over here at the transverse image, I also want to make sure that's lined up transverse. This particular patient is pretty well lined up in the transverse plane here. We're going to rotate this one a little bit. The one control that you're going to use is going to be the Z rotation because the Z rotation is going to spin it like a clock. And the Z control down here on the keyboard, you've got X, Y, and Z is going to be your um, CW button. And if you go back up to the uh, screen there, when I rotate uh, on the Z uh, control here, I can straighten out my endometrium. If it's like this, I can straighten it out by rotating that control. And you can also see down here then, take notice as to what your coronal plane is starting to look like. If you have a patient where it's way out of plane here, as I rotate it into the plane, you can see how the whale's tail we're looking for starts to appear down in this particular image. Then I'm going to rotate uh, and use my quadrant button down here and go to my B quadrant. So then I can Z this one with my Z control. Many times you'll do it and the patient's uterus is a little bit off axis this way or the other direction. So if the patient's off axis here, again, you're going to line it up with that coronal plane straight across. And again, as you look down here, you can see as I start lining this up, my corner will start coming in and out of plane here. And you can kind of finally adjust those accordingly. If I move my pan control now anterior to posterior, here's anterior to posterior. 
I can watch my coronal image here go from anterior to posterior as I slice through that particular um, image. And I can pick the center image that I want here by just um, leaving my reference point there. Then I can come down to this control or this um, quadrant down here, and I'm going to use my Z function there as well to line my uterus up straight up and down here. And I'm going to take the zoom control right here on the keyboard. So I'm going to use this one, and then if you look back up here, I'm going to zoom up my image just a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. What some of these things mean here right now, again, we're in our pan function here. This is the active mode. The R just means that this image is reversed. Um, this should be uh, normally right side, left side, but it's going to be um, left side, right side now. That's what the R means. The same thing up here, we're seeing the R. So rather than the fundus being over here, it's flipped because during my rendering, when I change one plane, all the other planes will change according to it because they're all connected. So this one is also reversed, and the Z just means that they're zoomed up with our zoom control. Once I bring this image up and get my nice little whale's tail here, I can bring this to a one-on-one -on -one image by going to my uh, third soft key here, and I push it on the actual keyboard. I don't, I can't control any of them here, so I'm going to push this to change the quadrant uh, to a one-on-one -on -one view, and now you can see this on a one-on-one -on -one image. I can take a picture of that if I want. Um, if I want to change it to a different quadrant to see that particular image, I'm just going to rotate my uh, thumb wheel here. But again, here I'm on quadrant C, which is that particular image there. The next thing I can do is I'm going to use my menu knob right down here on the control board, on the keyboard. I'm going to rotate my menu knob in order to control the menu here. So as I rotate this down, I'm going to go into a multi-slice view knob by going to 3D, 4D, Advanced. I'm going to push it in now to activate it, and I'm going to go down to my grid, push that in to activate it. And now I have to go back over to my uh, third soft key here and change my format into a 1 to 3 ratio, or 1 to 3 image, 1 image here, 3 here, and I get my multi slice with my slices going through that midline of the endometrium. If I want to activate this over here, I can do that by just clicking on it with my select key and I can move these up and down if I need to. The radiologist cannot manipulate these at their workstation. They're just going to get the images that you take. So if you would like, you can come over here and you can click on these arrows and take um, all the different slices. If I click on my double arrow here, you're going to see this jump up to this section. I clicked on my arrows here, and I'm going to click on the arrows on the other side to move down to the next section. And you're going to see it jump down to the middle. I can take a picture of that, and if I click it one more time, it goes down to the third section of um, my image there as well. You can see that I'm slicing um, the A plane, because in this particular view it's A, B, C. So I'm slicing my A plane horizontally, A horizontally, because this slice through here is the coronal image. Or if I slice my B image horizontally, I'm going to get the same particular view here. So if I click and change this to B, these images aren't going to change. If I want to see my transverse images here, I'm going to go to my B plane here and I want to slice it horizontally, uh, vertically and that's going to give me, give me my transverse image, uh, images over here. So if I leave this on B but I change it to the, hor uh, to the vertical slices here, you're going to see the transverse images pop up here. And then you can see how they're slicing through up uh, on that image there. I can also activate this and go from fundus down through the cervical area by just moving these. Okay, so we're going to go back to the A plane, and in order to come over here, I can uh, use my menu knob here, and I'm going to go back to the A plane, and I'm going to go to horizontal. There's back to my coronal images. If I want to make these any bigger, I can change my format here to uh, a 3x3 three three so that I have bigger images here or 2x2 two two at all, all preference as to what you want to see. I can also change my slice spacing oops, and dial this up or down in terms of the thickness of the slices that you're seeing here.
And if I go back to a one-on-one -on -one view here, let's go back here for a second. I want to try one more thing for everybody. And I'm going to change back to my C quadrant. I just went and hit the measure control here. If you look down here, I hit the measurement to activate the measurements now. So now I'm going to use a measurement on here. And if I wanted to now measure where my IUD was from the wall, is that where you're going to measure it from here? Say the IUD was sitting in here. Then I can measure the distance of the IUD in that um, particular plane. Now a little bit more information just about this in general. Um, get out of the measurements here. These are MPRs. These are slices that were created from your longitudinal acquisition. So these are the actual, um, this is your acquisition plane, which was the sagittal, and the transverse and coronal are reconstructed from all of those slices. The difference between this and the, say that the thing you're familiar with with the baby faces is a baby face is a surface rendering so you're seeing the surface of the baby's face, which is um, dimensional and covered with fluid. These are just slices going through the uterus that it's reconstructed from your initial sweep. So this is 3D multiplanar reconstruction. What you see with baby faces is a surface rendering of the actual surface. And the reason we're seeing that surface nicely is because of the fluid that is surrounding it. If you don't have any fluid surrounding it, you're going to get images, you know, you're not going to see that baby's face. Um, and if you slice down into the baby's head, you're going to see images more similar to this when you're looking at these three side pieces, uh, three side images.